G'day guys, Matt here from WaterPro. I am here with Jonesy today. Uh, we are at Lawn Hub HQ. Uh, Jonesy's been outside um, doing a ryegrass oversow on our uh, display Tiff Tough. Um, an Ervo favorite. An Ervo favorite, yeah. <laughs> I prefer Tiff Tough. We want to stripe it up, make it specky for everyone. So part of what we're doing in that process is obviously growing in new seed. Um, ideally, when we do new seed, we're ordering twice yeah. a day yeah it depends on depends on the situation but it's three to four times a day for short bursts keeping the seed damp rather than soaked but yeah yeah um we already have an irrigation system here at lawn hub hq um it was part of the building when we moved in the downside of that at the moment is which we just found out yep. that it has one start time so which means that we cannot turn it on say morning and at lunchtime and in the afternoon we're limited to only t coming on once a day Problem with that, we get an afternoon breeze, it's gonna dry everything out and all of our work's gonna be undone. So our good friends at Hunter have been nice enough to give us a new Pro HC controller. Um, this would be what I would class the state-of-the-art controller in residential and light commercial. It is a completely Wi-Fi based controller. Yes, you can operate it locally, but it's a Wi-Fi based controller that allows smart predictive watering using their weather as well, but also gives myself and Jonesy ability to operate this controller from our uh, mobile phones or a website anywhere in the world and multiple start times as well. So, Which is what we're mainly after, but yeah, obviously the added features are, are a great benefit to that as well. Yeah, so when we're not here on a weekend and we do know that it's a 40 degree day, we can we have the ability to, I guess, log onto that and just turn it on again. So. We'll take you into our control room um, and show you the existing controller and uh, how we go about changing this out. Okay, so we're in the server room now, uh, which is where the irrigation controller is housed. Um, ideally, I don't like it being in here, um, but it's where the current irrigation cable has been coming through, so we'll probably likely leave it there. The one benefit with it being a Wi-Fi based controller is it doesn't matter where we put it because as long as we've got, I guess, signal um, to the internet and where the cables can come in from the valves and we, we're fine, we can get onto that from there. So um, one thing that Jonesy's gone and done is created little stickers from numbered one through to four. This site has four stations, four stations, correct? Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I guess a little tip for people that are changing from an old controller to a new controller that's really cool is you might notice on this controller um, that we have multiple black uh, wires here it's very hard to tell what wire does what station once they've been all pulled out. So prior to us fully removing this controller, we will take out each station uh, in its corresponding number and put the number sticker on that on that wire. That way, when we go to put the new controller in, it's much more simple. And you, obviously, we do that on 24, 36 station setup. So it makes life a lot easier when you go to upgrade. You're not then trying to figure out what station did what back on the install again. So Jonesy will label these up and then we will remove the controller from the wall and then install a new one from there. I've had a day. <laughs> You've written I've written them on the wrong <laughs> on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonesy's gone and labelled all the cables for us, um, which will make the new controller install a lot easier. Obviously, we now turn the power point off of here, unplug the old controller, uh, and remove this off the wall. Normally, on an old controller, there's a locating screw, and on new controllers, a locating screw up here. It's just a case of pushing up and out, and that will bring the old controller off, and we can discard that. And then we'll install the new Hunter Hydrowise controller, Pro HC. So what we can do here, same thing as you see on the back of this unit, it's got a, a little hook point where we can put it in and pull down and that will still use the same one. What we will do afterwards just to retain it from, from moving is uh, screw it into the wall as well, just to make sure it sits nice and level. Um, but for setup for this purposes, we can keep it like this. So in there like that. And we will bring 
through the bottom port. You will notice inside the controller, if you were on a wall, there's also an option to come through the back of the unit as well, just by a case of knocking those out there. But we'll bring these cables through. And because he, Jonesy's obviously labeled these up, you'll see on this controller, this is a six station controller. We've got numbers one through to six. We're using one through to four here. We'll assign one to one, two to two and so forth um, and wire them up. And then from there, we'll turn it on and start to connect it to the internet. All right, so I have wired the common in and vows one through to four as per the labeling that Jonesy's done. So now we can close that front door and turn the controller on. And you'll notice on the screen of the HydroWise, we'll take this protective cover off of this now. It has a connection wizard. On this connection wizard, it allows you to uh, exit the wizard and I guess set it up as a localized controller or we configure it, uh, we can continue by pressing OK and we can move through the wireless settings to set this controller up as a uh, Wi-Fi internet based uh, controller. So um, being that Jonesy is going to be the one that's going to be controlling this pr predominantly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get him to download the HydroWise app on his phone. It can be downloaded either on the uh, Apple App Store or the Android Play Store as well. So um, all you'd be looking up is Hunter HydroWise and you will find the app there. It's the latest app. It was two apps there. Um, you'll find that it will just be important to note that you need to download the latest one that's there as well. Um, and that'll allow you to connect to these and uh, we'll go from there. Do you have a HydroWise account? No. Okay, so you will create an account. All right, let's get started. Okay, welcome Adam Jones. So at this point, you can name your controller. Okay, so on the serial number, have your serial number, which is up the top here. We enter the serial number into the system and then it will ask you to now connect to the Wi-Fi network. So then we want to go to Wi-Fi on the controller. Oh. So we want to do the connection wizard here. Go through the connection wizard on this controller and find the local Wi-Fi network, enter the password, and that will now connect. Doing a quick reboot. So we've connected to the Wi-Fi network locally on the controller. We've set up our HydroWise account on the phone. Now it's a case of going through the, the wizard on the phone to find the controller. So now we should be able to go continue. So now that we're on our main menu, we can go through the setting up of the programs. Um, obviously, Jonesy would remember what station did what as far as lawns and gardens and what have you. So. The beauty of the HydroWise system is we can go in and we can actually change the name of those stations. So instead of it being called Station 1, we could call that Front Lawn, Station 2 being Back Lawn or whatever it happens to be for your own property. Um, and then we can actually set the start times, multiple start times and start creating a program for each of those zones as well. So which means you'll run through that now. If you press through the programs button here as well, and you can add a program and start setting up zones. Yep, that's fine. You can do that. That's easy. So zones. Yep. So then the name of that zone is whatever you want to call station one. Yep, and you would add another zone. You notice there where it says image and icon, that ability is you can actually take a photo of your lawn area. And then that is a representation of the area as well. So it doesn't have to be just a name. You can actually have a photo of your back garden area. If it's a pot plant section that you're wanting to water, it's actually that as well. So. Just makes it identification of, of, especially if you've got more than four zones, as it's quite simple with what we've got here, but it can be complicated. The HydroWise controller goes right up to 24 stations. Um, so it um, can be a lot. For, for the purposes of what we're trying to do with the grow in on a uh, rye over so now, um, let's call this program, if you go to the top of your page, Jonesy, um, the enter the program name, let's call it rye growing or whatever you would like to call it we'll do time based watering days are every day mm -hmm. start times this is where you enter your start times so you press that there oh very very simple to do one thing that happens a lot uh I guess and a lot of phone calls we tend to get through WaterPro is we see errors in controller system setups where someone will say, my station's coming on, say station one is coming on three times uh, 
because what we tend to see is someone's gone through and put up three start times. Now, it's important to know when you set a start time, start time one is that whole program coming on on its first start. Start time two is that exact same program coming on the second time. So as per what Jones is doing here, he's trying to have it come on once in the morning, I'm assuming you've set one up at, uh, at 9 a.m., one at 1 p.m. and again at 5 p.m. What we tend to see is that it's a total of four start times. What we tend to see sometimes is people say, I thought each start time was, I guess start time one was for station one and start time two was for station two. That's not the case. And so then people's lawns and gardens are actually getting flooded because of that. So it's important to know that you've got one zone and a program, they're completely separate. However, reach out to us and we're happy to go through that for you as well. So um, in this grow in program, we've also only added the lawns we've not done the gardens at all for this it's just the lawn so the ability in this program is we can add and add and change those the stations inside that program as we see fit every day is the days of the week that we're watering no for the lawn growing yeah lawn growing is every day yep okay so you're creating a new program now for the garden garden yeah. beds okay cool whilst i class jonesy is quite an intelligent person it's also it's very easy to navigate, isn't it? Very easy to navigate. It's actually quite simple. Further to that, we can actually add predictive watering too. So once that grow in has happened and we were happy, we can actually start to say, well, we want predictive watering. And based on our location, using, I guess, multiple metrics that's coming from the internet, it can say, well, if it's due to be over certain degrees, water X amount more. If it's going to be likelihood of rain being more than say X percentage, then water X percent more as well. And that can be either percentage based or runtime based. Um, it gives you, I guess, flexibilities um, for what we're doing here. We're not going to let predictive watering take control of the, the program. It's going to be our control um, that we know what our, our profile is going to need. But there's a lot of people out there that don't know how much water their plants need at any given day or week. So then the system can do that for you as well. Cool. Yeah. So that is set up. That's good to go. Um, one thing you will notice if you go down to the actions button and you can say start zones and it will give you a list on your screen of all your zones. So if you were to highlight, say, large lawn and small lawn, like that, and then at this point you can adjust the minutes there and then start and that will set you the way you go in your operating. Right. See. So effectively, what that does mean now is providing nothing happens between the connection points on this controller, like my unit at home, I've got the same controller myself. I haven't had to touch that now for the last two years. It's all been operated from my phone that sits inside my shed and it does everything. So um, these run in a six, an eight, a 12 and a 24 station controller, I believe. Um, Hunter only do these in an outdoor model now, um, available in Australia. So you do notice that it does come with a key. So if this is on the outside wall of your house um, and you're a bit worried about people obviously having access into that and being able to muck around with things, it can be locked and you can keep that key. Obviously we're not worried too much about the key because we are inside our own lock and key building. So um, set up for Lawn Hub. Thank you again to Hunter. Um, if you are interested in these controllers, they are available at WaterPro. Um, if you do need any more information, please hit us up at waterpro.com.au. Thanks.